Welcome to the 3D Printing Canada CR10 V2 BL Touch installation video. The CR10 V2 is one of Creality's latest offerings and makes a few much needed updates to the original CR10 design that make it much more capable and easier to use. Today we will extend that capability further by adding a BL Touch auto bed leveling system. This is one of the easiest BL Touch installations we've done. Here are the parts we will need. A standard Antclabs original BL Touch unit, a 1000 mm extension cable, a 3D printed BL Touch mounting bracket, some zip ties, a pair of snippers, a small star head screwdriver, a small flat head screwdriver, and a set of Allen keys. The ones that came with your kit should be fine, but we prefer using these screwdriver types instead. Our first step will to be assemble the BL Touch and the bracket properly. Locate the parts in the BL Touch kit needed here. The BL Touch body, the two nuts and two bolts, and the bracket itself. You will also have to supply two M3 style button head screws about 10 millimeters in length. Let's begin by inserting our M2 style nuts that came with the BL Touch kit into the mounting bracket. You will see two nut size holes in the top of the bracket that you can push them into. I find it easiest to use one of the bolts to help guide them in. Next, we are going to screw our BL Touch body onto the bracket from the bottom. Make sure that the connector side of the BL Touch is facing the same side of the bracket as the TM3D text. Carefully insert your first bolt and use the screwdriver from the bottom to fasten it. Once the first bolt is on, repeat and fasten the other side. The CR10 V2 has two BL Touch mounting holes on the right side of the gantry. Start by screwing your BL Touch in with the top hole. Because of the length of the bolts that come with the BL Touch, we're actually going to have to back off our rear touch body mounting screw a little so that we can put in our lower mounting screw. Once the bolt is backed off, put in your lower mounting screw and then we can tighten up the BL Touch bolt again. In our next step, we can carefully plug in our 1000 mm extension wire. We will have to gain access to the back of the printer for the remainder of the installation. To cleanly route our wire, we're going to have to put it through the protective sleeve with the rest of the wires. Start by cutting all the zip ties off the wire assembly to gain access to the sleeve. Once you have access to the sleeve, you can put through the connector side of the extension cable. Pull through the rest of the wire, making sure that it's not too tight on the BL Touch side. We want a little bit of slack there. Our wiring is done at this point, so we can reinstall our zip ties. To plug in the BL Touch, we have to get access to the daughter board that's on the left-hand side of the X-axis gantry. The cover has two screws on the top, where the filament runout sensor is, and one on the bottom. The BL Touch connector for the daughter board is conveniently located right in the front. Unfortunately, the JST XH style connector on it doesn't leave enough length for our pins to plug into our BL Touch connectors. So what we have to do is take our small flathead screwdriver and we're going to very carefully pry off that connector housing. Work slowly and do not rush this process or else it is possible that you will damage or bend some of the pins. Work it from side to side using the circuit board as a bit of leverage being careful not to bend it at all. Eventually the housing will come right off. At the end of this process, we're left with five bare pins. To start, let's take our three pin JST connector on our extension cable and plug it into pins one, two, and three. Pin one is brown negative, pin two is red positive, and pin three is orange signal. Now we have to plug in our Z min signals. Unfortunately, the connector that comes on the extension cable is a three pin and we only have two pins left. We have to plug them in so the black ground wire is pin four and the white signal wire is pin five. To facilitate this, take your clips and from the inside of the empty pin, clip on the top and the bottom 
and then you'll be able to turn the three pin connector into a two pin one. Plug the connector in so that the black ground wire is pin four right beside the orange wire and that pin five is white on the outside pin. With everything plugged in, it's time to do some cable management. I like to wrap the cable around and then use two zip ties to secure it, making it much easier to store inside our metal housing. Tuck the cables in neatly and then reinstall the metal cover. Remember, it's two screws on the top and one screw on the bottom. Take care to make sure that the screw you use to secure the bottom of the housing is the proper length. If it's too long, it will actually anchor itself into the extrusion and prevent the Z-axis from moving. After flashing the firmware, turn the printer on and you should see the Tiny Machines logo. You will also see the BL Touch power up and do a self-test. Calibrating the BL Touch couldn't be easier. First, let's preheat the printer. We are using PLA in this instance, so that's what we'll preheat it for. While the printer is preheating, go to the motion axis and then auto home. You will see the printer home and then it should home the Z axis right in the corner. Next, we have to move Z to zero. Let's go to motion, move axis, move Z, and then move Z to zero. Navigate back to the info screen. To access the probe Z offset menu, click the select button three times. You will see the menu appear. You can also do this while the printer is printing for fine adjustments on the fly. Put a piece of paper underneath the nozzle. Move it back and forth. While you move it back and forth, move the probe Z offset into the negative value range. Keep moving it until you feel the tip of the nozzle grabbing the paper. You want it to grab enough that it feels a little bit rough, but not so much that it stops the paper from moving completely. To save the setting, click the select button. Then let's go to configuration and then scroll down to where it says store settings. Click store settings and you're good to go. At this point, you're ready to try your first print. Please make sure that you follow the instructions on our GitHub page for properly setting up your slicer for auto bed leveling. Without the proper start G code, the printer won't auto level the bed. If successful, you will see the printer auto level the bed by probing many different points. With its many improvements already, the BL Touch makes the CR10 V2 a modern and highly capable machine. Not only does it make leveling and setup much easier, but the installation process has been made much easier by design, and this was the easiest and fastest BL Touch installation we've done. During the first print, we did go back into the Probe Z offset menu just to adjust it a slight bit lower and saved the setting again. After that, our layers were perfect. As always, we thank you for watching this video and hope you enjoyed this guide.